break, but at this point in the show, we like to remind our listeners that you're listening to The Secrets of Success. My name is Bill Horan. This show is produced at the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. I wasn't prepared to be a caregiver to mom, but a little over a year ago, we realized she couldn't take care of herself without our help. And well, how could I not be there for her? I had no idea how hard it would be and just what I would need to know. Things I never thought of, like how to improve her mood and even for me, ways to stay positive. Luckily, I found the Caregiving Resource Center from AARP. It had articles about the basics that got me started, but also information about the hurdles I was facing in this new role. I could even connect with experts and hear from others who had been in my place. I know this road we're on isn't an easy one, but I'm really happy to have the extra help for her and for me. Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Articles, tips, and tools to help you both care for your loved one and care for yourself. This message is brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back. You're listening to The Secrets of Success. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and today we're speaking with Michael Godfrey, author of Put Stress to Work, Turning Headaches into Advantages. Michael, um, we were talking about stress, and I think it's on page 23 in your book. Um, you mm-hmm. give us certain kind of warning signs and uh, to kind of know about the, uh, let's call it the uh, stress experience. Can you tell us what those warning signs are? Sure. The- these are these are these are things that can exacerbate stress. They can make it worse, uh, but they also they also create it initially as well when they're present. One of them is how certain or uncertain are you in the situation? Everybody knows that when you go into a, a situation that you that there's a high level of unfamiliarity. You're not sure what may happen. You're not sure what may uh, how people may behave. Uh, that kind of thing, that creates a little bit of stress. It creates everything from discomfort to full-blown stress, depending on uh, your own belief system and depending on how you uh, approach the situation. The second thing is, is how much relevant information do you have about the situation? This also goes to that unfamiliarity. Is If you know what's going to happen, you know the people there, you know, uh, you know the agenda, those kinds of things, you're going to be less stressed because the more information you have, the more familiar... And the more familiar you are with the situation, the less distress, which is negative stress, that you may experience. Then another question is, how, how much control do you have over the situation? If you go into a situation and you have full control over it, you can call the shots, you can make things happen the way you want it to happen, then that right there is, is going to create less stress for you because you are in control. But when you go into a situation where you're really not in control, it's going to be a little bit le- a little bit more stressful to you because you don't know where the situation is going to go. And then finally, <clears throat> how much interpersonal conflict is involved? Uh, when you go to a party or a gathering or you go to work, if there's a high level of interpersonal conflict uh, with that, it, it's stressful. I mean, you're just looking toward it's going to be a whole lot of trouble when I go there. Mike, I think that's a great list, and I'd just like to go back over it. Um, the first one was, I think, how certain or uncertain are you in a situation? How much relevant information do you have about the situation? How much control do you have over the situation? And how much in, interpersonal conflict is involved? Um, so, for instance, this could be something like um, a firing at work, where... Um, you're uncertain. You've you've heard people are going to be let go. Uh, you've gotten some information, but whether or not it's relevant, you're not sure because you don't know until the time comes. You don't control it. And, of course, there's going to be conflicts because somebody thinks you're not doing a good job. Maybe you think you are. So I- am I correct in using that as an assessment? I think that's a great illustration. That's a great illustration. And it does cover it covers all four of those things. And I think just for all of us, um, maybe we look at our job that way and say, 
are we certain about what we're doing? If we're always in doubt or fearing um, um, uh, someone coming back at us or, or saying you didn't do a good job, or maybe we know we're not doing a good job, maybe that's not the right field for us. Maybe we went into it because it's lucrative, but there's a lot of pressure. There's pressure in sales, and if we can't keep up a quota, et cetera. So I think that's an excellent list that you have on page 23 in the book, and uh, it, it really uh, could tell us, uh, I guess, some fields to avoid and some uh, occupations and some situations. Let's put it that way. Sure. Do people realize when they're getting stressed when they talk to you about it, or does it kind of sneak up on them just like a heart attack? I think they're both of those things, but I think the big thing, when they come to me, <clears throat> typically the, the train is about to go off the track. Now, I'm not a therapist or anything like that, but they know that something has to be different. Uh, they know that the me- demands are big, and uh, the people I serve have high-demand jobs. And so they know that the demands are getting big. And as you know, Bill, if somebody's performing well in the job, they're probably going to get more responsibility, <laughs> and which means more stress. And so the big thing there is helping them to get clear uh, to, to posture their life to manage the stress well. The stress will be there. There's no doubt about it. We're not talking about putting stress away. We're talking about putting it to work. So in their lives, it's a matter of helping them get clear about what is important to them, what's valuable to them what they feel like they're put here on this planet to do and what kind of difference they want to make. And then we work with them on, okay, so how do you manage stress in the moment? When stress happens, what does it look like on you? And then how do you manage it? Uh, then on a, in the bigger picture, it's about where you want to invest yourself and are you willing to take on that stress? Because when stress has a purpose, and you feel like it's working towards something, you're going to be more uh, more comfortable with the stress itself because it has purpose. Um, Michael, again, I'd like the audience to know our guest today is Michael Godfrey, spelled G-O-D-F-R-E-Y. His book is Put Stress to Work, Turning Headaches into Advantages. And Michael, could you give us the website and where the book is available? You bet. The book is available at Amazon.com. And the website is discoveryourtruecourse.com. That's discoveryourtruecourse.com. Now, although we're talking about stress kind of in a negative way, we really do need it because without some stress, we would be basically a slug. Our life would be totally boring. Uh, there'd be no activity. An apple wouldn't fall off a tree. The wind wouldn't blow. The uh, waves wouldn't come up to shore. We would, I think, just die of boredom after about three days. Is that correct? I, th- I think that is exactly true. We need stress. We need some stress. And especially <clears throat> adults, and we can talk about how that's defined, but let's just call it what it is, adults. We need stress to learn and grow. Typically, adults will not learn and grow as they could if they are not stressed, which means they have to feel like this is something I've got to learn or something I've got to, I've got to rise to. Otherwise, they may not. Now, the good and the bad, from what I understand, is that uh, it's really hard to think creatively if we put ourselves under stress. So if we're looking for a new idea or if we want to develop a business, if we're, if we're under too much stress, financial or emotional stress at home or whatever, uh, that's not going to enhance our creative thinking. It's not going to enhance creative thinking or rational thinking or help us to communicate well. In fact, we tend to lose perspective. I like to say that that when you are really stressed, it's like looking at the world through a drinking straw. The first thing to go is the big picture. So you get so focused down on this little piece of the picture that you lose the perspective for what what the bigger picture is, how you could learn and grow, what what could possibly be good about this, how can I manage it, is there something I need to do to be uh, to be better postured in the situation I'm in, either at work or at home. Is there some kind of uh, intervention that I need to go get some training or, or go get some help with a counselor or anything like that? Is there something I can do? Because there's always something you can do. There's always something you can do. Now, on the good side, though, stress creates action. And it does get us to push. It does get us to study some more and maybe uh, research some more. And probably a lot of new innovations and developments and creative projects have come about because uh, people needed that electric light or they needed uh, a new invention to 
uh, help some former invention just improve and keep getting better and better. So uh, I guess there is a good side to stress, and we we just as uh, you use the word optimize, I get the optimum amount without going over. Um, is that what we're looking for? That that's what I think. And a lot of times, what, what people will do is just that stress will rise, and they feel like that's a normal thing, as I mentioned earlier, that it's normal to be really, really stressed, and they don't sense that there's another place to be. And so the people that I work with, I try to help them identify what is that optimum place that really keeps you working well, and let's find that. You get really tuned into it, and then you may have to go above it. In fact, you will, but you know at least where home is. So you can come back to that and keep a reasonable amount of stress and not just literally kill yourself in the course of all you're doing. Now, something I was surprised that I thought stress was more internal and things we did to ourselves, but you say in your book that stress can be contagious. Tell us how that works. It absolutely can be. Uh, this this is about emotional systems, and you people see it regularly, whether they want to acknowledge it or not. If they go home and they're stressed, and which means they're probably a little angrier or sad or depressed or have the emotions that go with stress, uh, that, that affects their family. And it affects the people around you at work. And, you know, people may say to you, well, you seem really stressed. I mean, they see that. But it affects people. It affects the emotional system. And every 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 part of the system affects every other part. And so you can literally affect the production at work. You can affect the health of your family if you allow stress just to simply go on unmanaged. Now, can you give us some habits that we could add to our daily lives that would help us manage stress? Sure. One of the things that I suggest doing from the very beginning is to build some really, really good foundations, which means get very clear about your values and get very clear about what you want to be able to say you did and accomplished when you leave this earth. Uh, If you're clear about those things, it helps you make some really uh, better decisions and quicker decisions because you already know what you want in in the situation, in your life. You know what you want. So a lot of the things that bombard you, you'll put those away. Uh, Building... uh, Building a life that is paced by priorities related to your mission and related to your values will help trim away a lot of things as well. That that is big. Now, when stress does come your way, I do recommend managing it in the moment because if you take care of the little things, the big things will be better. And so I really do advocate breathing and meditation. And so if your listeners wanted to uh, try to get in touch with... uh, with me or others uh, that they know about uh, have learned to do some real quality meditation. It's not necessarily about any kind of religion or anything. It's really more about helping your body physiologically and, and mentally to to manage it. Michael, again, so we, wa- medit- we want ahead. to tell our audience before we wrap up that the book is Put Stress to Work. It's by our guest, Michael Godfrey, G-O-D-F-R-E-Y. And Michael, give us that website once again. The website is discoveryourtruecourse.com. And uh, if we discover our true course, we'll be in good shape and we won't have to worry about stress. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um, I advocate everybody get out and get that book, put stress to work, make it work for you. We'd like to remind our listeners that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Haran. Please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.